Hello, everyone. So, since from the previous uh, lectures, I have described uh, various uh, topics or concepts regarding the time series analysis, like uh, what is the definition of time series analysis, time series data, what are different uh, applications of time series data, what are different components of time series data. But now, in this session, we will talk about what is the basic purpose or basic objective we will deal with in the uh, time series analysis? Because since it is a statistical analysis, so we have to know what are the basic objective, what is the basic statistical techniques which are going to apply, and what are the different objective of that, and from that, which type of insights we will obtain. Because uh, the basic purpose of our time series analysis is to make the forecasting. So in our time series analysis, the aim of our uh, analysis is to understand and identify different variations so that we can easily predict future variations separately and combine together. Okay, so with the help of time series analysis, we will identify those factors or you can say those uh, components which will affect the which are affecting the time series data, like trend, seasonal, cyclic, and random components. So we will just identify those factors and we can make the predict, we can make the prediction about those variations separately or combined together. Okay, look how the complicated series could be understood as follows separately. So these are two basic aims at the time of time series analysis. The first one is to identify different factors which are affecting the time series and to make the prediction about those uh, factors or components separately as well as combined. The second is to complicated series can be understood separately, how you can uh, understand separately. So these are two aims. So like irregular components, if we will plot a diagram for the irregular components, so these will be like this. There is no particular trend. Since it is a irregular, so there will be no particular trend in this diagram. So now we will talk about different mathematical models which are used in time series analysis. So don't uh, worry about the mathematical things because it is nothing. Uh, we generally, in time series analysis, we will use the two types of models. One is multiplicative model, another is additive model. So generally this multiplicative model is used for the forecasting. Like observed values in time series is the product of components here yi is the outcome variable suppose we want to make a forecasting about the you know co2 emission so this yi is nothing only the amount of co2 emission okay then this will be equal to the multiplication of all four components like trend seasonal cyclic and irregular components so it is nothing only the multiplication of three components all four components so this yi is our outcome variable which we want to make the forecasting like uh, in our case we are want to make the forecasting of our um, co2 emission then it will be a, nothing only the multiplication of all four components trend seasonal cyclic and irregular okay ti is nothing only the trend value at ith year ci is the cyclic value and i is irregular but SI is missing here, so don't worry about that. So SI will be also there, like this one. So this is a multiplicative time series model. TI, the so our outcome variable at a particular time interval, at a particular time interval I is equal to TI trend into SI seasonal at IF, IF time point into CI into II. This is a multiplicative model of time series analysis, which is used for the forecasting. Okay. Actually, the earlier was 
without seasonal. If we remove the seasonal components, then this module can be used. But if we are not removing the seasonal components, then these four components will be considered together. So smoothing techniques. So what are what do you mean by smoothing? So smoothing is nothing only to you know identify the components and to remove one by one component from the time series. Like uh, it will this is smoothing helps to see overall patterns in time series data. Is smoothing the techniques smooth or iron out variation to get the overall picture. There are several smoothing techniques of time series. So uh, let's see what are different techniques. In uh, in today, in this session, we will discuss the moving average method. So what is the moving average? As you all know that uh, if we want to know the average of anything, then generally we go for the arithmetic mean. Okay, suppose. Uh, if you want to know the pollution level of uh, any particular city in uh, 15 days, then we will just add uh, the temperature of different days, 15 days, and divide by 15. So this will be the average temperature of that city in a 15 days. Okay, so this is called simple mean or average, simple average. But in time series we cannot do that because time factor is also involved. So we go for the moving average. Okay, so this is another example, another, uh, you know, average which is used in time series analysis. So we will calculate the moving average to get an overall impression of the pattern of movement over time because it is moving over time, time to time. So we will calculate the moving average. This is nothing, only the average of consecutive time series values for a chosen period of length L. Let's see. This is used for the smoothing. A series of arithmetic means over time. Result depends upon choice of length. And this uh, length of this uh, moving average may be three years, five years, or anything according to your purpose. So let's see how you can calculate the moving, moving averages. So suppose we have K points, okay? and the length of uh, moving average is three. So we will calculate the moving average for three observations, three time points. So Y1, Y2, Y3, these are three, sum of three observations divided by three. But for moving, calculating the moving average for the second period, this Y3, Y1, Y2, Y3, this Y1 will be emitted, Y1 will be removed. So we will calculate the Y2, Y3, and next four divided by three. And then again, similarly, we will remove the Y2, Y3, Y4, Y5 divided by three. So in this way, we will calculate the moving average in time series. So let's see. So suppose we have a yearly data from 1990 to 2001, and this is the particular values. 5, 6, 8, 10, like this. So we, we will calculate the moving average for three point time interval. So we will calculate for three values. Like uh, first of all, we will calculate 5 plus 6 plus 7 divided by 3. So we will get the 6. This is the first moving average. Similarly, for the calculating the moving average for second one, second moving average, so we will omit the 5. So we will calculate the 6, 7 plus 8 divided by 3. Then again, 7, 8, 10 divided by 3. So similarly, we will constitute a series of moving averages. Okay. So what is the importance of this moving averages? Let's see. So it is used for the forecasting purpose. So this is a manual way. Okay. I will tell you how you can calculate, how you can make the forecasting by using statistical software, SPSS. So, but here, if you want to make it uh, in manual method, then just calculate the forecast, uh, these moving averages, then draw a line, draw a graph between the first series time points, these time points, and this series, this is the actual series. So this is the actual. Again, these, you will get the moving averages so 
these moving averages will provide the forecasted values. So first, uh, put these uh, values, actual values coordinates, then again, forecasted or, or coordinates of moving averages. So these two will provide the actual and forecasted values. So this uh, manual forecasting can be done by using this method of moving averages. So by this, we can find out the trend. If we take the similarly, if we take the time point five, so we will calculate the for the five time points, five, six, seven, eight, ten. So these five points will be taken together. So, so similarly, we can make the trend of forecasting for the five years. So these are the methods, moving average method. So similarly, since we know that uh, this moving average can be used for the trend to identify the trend and forecasted values of trend. But if we want to make the seasonal effect, if we want to study the seasonal effect, the another component, then we go for the another methods. Like to measure the seasonal effects, construct a seasonal indices. So you have to calculate the seasonal indices. Seasonal indices is a degree to which the seasons differ from one to another. So what is requirement? Time series should be sufficiently long to measure the seasonal effect. This time series should be long. Only then you can calculate the seasonal indices. So time series should be sufficiently long to allow to observe the seasonal fluctuations. So this is seasonal effect the method like uh, calculating moving average. First you calculate the moving average then set a number of periods equal to the number of type of season then use the multiplicative model trend seasonal cyclic and random okay this is called ratio to trend method ratio to moving average method okay ratio to moving average first then ma removes s and r moving average will be calculated then trend and r because then we will use the moving average to to uh, to find out the seasonal and random component. Okay. So this is called ratio to moving average method. So for seasonal effect, for calculating the seasonal effect to identify the seasonal effect, we go for the uh, this ratio to moving average method. This one. Calculate moving average first, step one, and step two, we will calculate the ratio of this moving average. Like this divided by moving average. So we have only seasonal and random component. Okay. And for each type of session, calculate the average of ratios. So it is called ratio of moving average method. This is used for the seasonal effect. Like one, like this one. We will calculate the quarterly. We have a quarterly data. And accordingly, we will calculate the moving average, then ratio to moving average then we will find the seasonal indices. This is another method, which is used for the quarterly. This is called basically link relative method, which is generally used for the seasonal components to identify the seasonal components. So this is called method of link relatives, method of ratio to moving average and link relative. So this is called link relative method. And similarly, this uh, you have always keep in mind that negative trend is also a trend. Sometimes we trend means always, which is uh, which is working in the positive direction. We, we ignore the negative trend. Okay, so always keep one thing in your mind that negative trend is also a trend. So with this, I have completed the you know, theoretical part of this time series analysis in our next session, next uh, session or next chapter, we will discuss uh, the hands-on SPSS by which you can uh, make the forecasting by using the SPSS. So thank you.